Hello and welcome to another episode of the Bad Gamer Good Gamer podcast. Welcome everybody to this fine, fine Monday morning. It's uh, definitely morning. out of the ordinary for me, at least. <laughs> but we yeah, do it's have nice. A, it's nice. Yeah, it's normal for me, but <laughs> not normal for me. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, we do have a few things to talk about really quick. So we've got some Splinter Cell announcements. I know that's going to make people excited. We also have this weird AI thing from Meta that might have some implications in gaming. Yes or no? We'll, we'll discuss. I really don't know. Yeah, don't I know, know you're not like a fan of talking about meta and whatnot, but this is. I'm really not. I'm really yeah, not. Yeah. It's what, well, we have to. In this but case, but I have to, you have to consider it as in like um, know your enemy, right? So. We, we <laughs> I, I could say the same thing about you and NFTs, but. <laughs> oh, yeah. I mean, I know my enemy. I talk about them whenever I get a chance. It's the same for <laughs> I me. I don't have an issue. Yeah. Uh, and then finally, yeah. we'll just run through um, some of the winners from the 40th Golden uh, Joystick Awards. Uh, yeah. But first, let us start with Splinter Cell. Let's do it. With a very weird announcement. Like, I don't well, know if this has ever happened with video games before. Did you see the video? I wanted to ask you. It's I skimmed through it. I, I, yeah, I skimmed, I skimmed through it um, because I just read the articles and I just skimmed through the video. But Splinter Cell is getting a radio, a radio <laughs> adaptation on BBC yes. Radio 4, which is weird. Which which is weird in a way, but that's not only the big news, but like, it. What's weird is how like it's the video was. It's just just like the game developers or like people who worked on the game just celebrating, talking about Splinter Cell. Oh yeah, because it's like, their twentieth anniversary. Uh, so 20th they released this video. Yeah, they released this video yeah. celebrating the twentieth anniversary. Um, and then and they then just kind of like threw it in. They're like, oh yeah, we're gonna t do a BBC radio show just like that. <laughs> so yeah, it's a it's a it's an audio adaptation of uh, Splinter Cell, the story and whatnot. Um, it's it's gonna be about Sam Fisher, who is training the next sort of generation of Echelon agents, right? Yeah. Um, it's gonna be I mean, called Tom Clancy's Splinter Cell Firewall. Firewall, yes. Yeah. I, I mean, I don't know. It's it's interesting. I'm not saying it's a bad idea. No, I yeah. think it's a very uh, brave, it's, courageous idea to. It is different in, in terms of like gaming in that medium, in, ter in terms of tel storytelling. But it's not the first time, personally, I've heard of like storytelling or like c comedy or uh, being told in a be like a radio oh, format no, 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 no. podcast um, format. Uh, no, no. Actually, I mean, the, the star, like the, the person is going to be uh, playing or voicing Sam Fisher uh, and Dennis Anthony is a long running um, sort of voice actor for like radio dramas or something like that. So yeah. like the concept, I, I'm aware of that quite well. It's like audiobooks, really. Like, but, yeah, but much. The, the, the weird thing for me is that they're adapting a game to radio. To this a radio program. Different. That's that's the yeah. weird thing for me. Not the the medium, but like the switch to that medium or the jump to yeah, that exactly. medium. Yeah, exactly. That's why I'm trying to like say like this is the first for gaming. Like oh, know, yeah, it's yeah, happened yeah. before uh, for other stuff. As far as I know, yeah. like the closest thing is probably I'm sure some game must have had like some audiobook or like audio like podcast type of thing or Maybe. whatever. Some like, some obscure uh, game, but like yeah. Yeah, know. yeah. But but the switch to radio and not like some obscure radio channel, this is BBC four. Uh uh, yeah. BBC Radio for what I mean. So uh, I'm interested. It's um, it's going to begin airing on December second, uh, so every soon, Friday. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah, next weekend. Um, it's going to be every Friday at two fifteen p.m. So to our British audience, tune in at that time. It's a thirty minute long program. I don't know. Yeah, did I'm they mention how many episodes it's going to run through? Like they did not. They did not l mention the length. But uh, I think we'll find out soon enough if it's running every week. Right. Mm. If it's a weekly uh, yeah. thing, then it should be finishing like by. I don't know. If well, well I, don't know. I don't know. I, I've never. I've never. Like, like I said, I'm aware of these radio uh, stories. Whatever. Like, I don't know what the name of the thing is called, but yeah. I've never actually looked into it. Or like, I don't know what's the standard in terms of like length. I'll tell you one thing that I know: BBC shows in general, whether yeah. radio or TV shows, are shorter than American yes. length yes. shows. So yeah, that has to what, do with their funding and whatnot. So in general, yeah, yeah their their seasons are shorter. They've always been. Uh, it was only like recently where like streaming or or like American Network uh, Studios started making like miniseries. 
Yeah. We used to call them like mini series back in the day. If it's like a 10 episode thing, it's a mini series. It, it technically still is, but <laughs> it's a, it, it has become a standard with the likes of Netflix and, and Disney and Amazon Prime. Like all these streaming giants are obviously focused on like a shorter episode right. runs, which in my opinion is not a bad idea because it focuses more on the story rather yeah. than like fluffing it up with fillers and stuff like that. So That's I don't right. know. Well, yeah. yeah, we'll have to see. I think I feel like ever since Kojima went to podcasting, they're like, oh, maybe we should do it too. I, I'm just guessing. Speculation, of course, but like, yeah, <laughs> maybe yeah, that's it, what it must be. <laughs> uh, no, but yeah, I, I'd love to dig deeper into like why this, uh, why like why this happened, and I don't know if they can have like a behind the scenes thing. That'd be cool to to check out. Um, Definitely, we'll, we'll we'll be we'll keep we'll keep a close uh, eye on it, and we'll like, let you guys know. Yeah, what, I've, what I've heard. About. I've only heard one. Like audio, not audio book, or not even. Um, well, I mean, I guess it's a narrative podcast. So a podcast where like it was telling a story of, like a fictional story. Uh, mm -hmm. I forgot what it was called, but it was really good. It was the first time that I've heard a story, right? Not like yeah. watched the show, or whatever. Like heard a show, uh, and then they eventually turned it into a TV show a few years ago. So it's it's a bit weird at first because I was. Uh, where was I? I was like outside. I was with Ona and like we were listening to it together. And it was weird because like we're just sitting, right? Having shisha or whatever, then mm -hmm. just listening to this thing. And you look weird listening to something and then not like, like if you're somebody else listening to the same thing, you're not talking, you're not like whatever, right? Uh, but I, yeah, I don't we, know. It doesn't seem weird to me, but like the no, way like you're from the outside, it, like, like, yeah, yeah like, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm imagining it from the outside, but like you're yeah. just listening. It's like you're listening to a voice note, like, but like it's a constant. But for like, voice <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> for like an hour, yeah. like an hour, obviously, like we'd stop and like comment on whatever happened or something like that. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, it's a bit weird, at least like for me in the beginning of just like listening and then just trying to imagine visually the environment, the characters, and like all the sound effects and all that sort of stuff. What that translates to in my mind. But like after maybe five ten minutes, like it you was just an afterthought. Yeah, you get used to it, and then if the story is done really well and i believe they have enough source material to turn this into like a really good story yeah. with uh splinter cell you'll just kind of forget all of that and you'll be emerged in right, exactly. in, sorry, in a, immersed. immersed yeah you'll be immersed yeah. in in the the story speaking of which the funny thing is they started with a netflix show like they actually mentioned a year or two ago that they uh, were uh, going to do a netflix show uh, yes uh, so uh we do have some information on that uh, it's going to be an anime styled uh yes. show it's going to run for two seasons uh, 16 episodes in total so again eight episodes uh, mini series yeah. type um and the writer and producer is Derek Kolstad who was the writer for the John Wick movies, which it's is very important. Yes, very this important. Very key note here. <laughs> it, it, I love like, yeah, this is all. Yeah, definitely. This, uh, oh, yeah, yeah. Big time. And uh, if they got him to to write the show, then I hope it's going to be in like in the similar style or similar vein to John Wick, even though it's not necessarily the Tom Clancy or like the yeah. Splinter Cell sort of uh, tone. But I, I have faith in this being uh, ending up being a good show because generally speaking, their animation projects, Netflix, have done really well. They have. Yeah, like, they really have, uh, especially with Cyberpunk recently. Like the most recent Cyberpunk, thing, that, yeah, that has yeah, been Cyberpunk amazing. was great. Yeah, uh, uh, Dracula was great. Um, was Arcane on it? Dracula, I liked it more in the beginning than at the end. But like it, it had, for me personally, it had a bit of a. a oh, we're talking about Castlevania, right? I, I just yeah, said Dracula. I meant, I meant Castlevania. Yeah, Castlevania, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, no, to me, it, it it clicked for me a lot halfway through the second season. Yeah. So like from that point onwards, like it like it really clicked with me. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Um, was Arth Kane on Netflix? I can't remember. Yes, it was. Uh, yeah. the the, uh, the lull show from yes, from, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, yeah. so Arcane. so yeah, they've had like a lot of successful anime adaptations that they've released. I've seen a couple of other anime shows or like animated shows on them as well. So generally speaking, I have faith that this is gonna end up being uh, a good series. Hopefully. Yeah. Um, it will aid in the, in the revival of interest uh, in, in, in the game because we don't know when it's coming out. We just have concept art, and that's We're it. talking about the other thing that they, that they talked about the was the Splinter Cell remake. This is the big... Yeah. 
big news yeah. that I think everyone I'm excited for this even even I am um, because I've never played Splinter Cell but it was one of those games because it was an Xbox exclusive yeah, uh, yeah. when it first came out all the way back in 17th of November 2002 yeah. that was when the game was first released so yeah um, so I never got the chance to play that game but I've always heard about it I've always seen like the multiplayer aspects of it like that was a huge thing back in the day that well. was that was like the I, I believe that was Microsoft's um a Metal Gear Solid, in the yeah, sense that it was their their stealth, exactly genre action like game killer, or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Uh, Story yeah. driven game. Yeah, well, obviously not on the same level, I would say, but like it, it definitely filled in that gap. That's why I'm saying Kojima and like Splinter Cell, like he's on podcast. They're gonna put Splinter Cell on podcast. Maybe they're tapping into that market. I don't know. <laughs> Maybe I don't know. Yeah, but like I, I do remember we. I forgot which game that was announced. I think maybe at E3 or something like that. Uh, which one? Uh, where like they said that oh like we're like uh, we, you'll see Sam Fisher soon or like you know Splinter oh, Cell or something. There was, there and it, was and a drop it, turned, it turned out it was like a part of an MMO type of thing or it was no I know exactly what you're talking about. Um, I can't remember the game. It was another. Shit. Oh, yeah, I, I forgot the game's it was name, but it was like this 4v4 or 3v3. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. So, yeah, it was not an MO. Yeah, it was, it was a, like a PvP type of situation. And it was and just skins or something, yeah. Well, I mean, the character would be in it, but it's not like a... Yeah. It's not a story-driven Splinter Cell game. I remember people I know were exactly. like really disappointed with that announcement because they've been waiting yeah, yeah. for the years. And I'm not sure if this was... An, like the remake was announced bother, before yeah. or not. Uh, yeah. But but now we we know like for sure they're they're working on the remake. Uh, and like I said, we only have concept art, but we also have one other piece of information about the game, which I thought was cool. I don't know how it's going to work with getting the writer from John Wick to do the anime, mm. <laughs> because John Wick is like a very bloody you know gun frenzy type of like the the, the movies. They're like that, and the You're game they're about, giving you the yeah. option where you can be a pacifist. You don't have to exactly. kill anybody to kill the game. Uh, Which to, I like, to win I the like game. That. Yeah, yeah, I like so that idea. Yeah, yeah. It's um it's something that people like typically and I can't remember what other game. But like you I can mean, uh, play the game without killing anyone. Yes, and and even if it's not part of the game design, people have tried in doing their own like unique runs. Like at least on Twitch I've seen a few of them like that. Like yeah. a no hit to whatever one or something like that. Like them not getting hit. And then there's others where like they don't kill anybody. They just kind of like go through. So that's an option. And it also works with the whole idea of, you know, being like a stealth game, stealth. right? Yeah. Because yeah, you want to avoid conflict. You want to avoid, you know, being found out or whatever at all costs. But if you still want to like shoot a couple of bad guys, you can. Mm. Uh, now you just have the option to be more tactical and more like, cool. you, utilizing your tools, yeah. utilizing all the gadgets that he has and all that sort of stuff. I like that. Yeah, no, it is pretty cool. Um, I remember, uh, just like a quick side note, like there, there was an issue, not an issue, like this pacifist route. I remember like uh, with the game like De Deus Ex uh, Machina, mm. the mm. game uh, it was on PS3. Like you can actually play stealthy like in the game completely and not kill anybody but when it yeah. comes to bosses you have to kill them oh and like, yeah uh, and then i remember uh, this was a long time ago i don't know if they patched it in or whatever but like i remember people complained that they they didn't want to kill the bosses they wanted to like find a way not to kill them or like yeah. silence them or like you know put them to sleep maybe just like knock the them game. down and then yeah 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 but yeah, I remember that was a thing, and like it's become a huge thing, like to have a pacifist route or to have that. Yeah, game yeah. like this. Yeah. So uh, yeah, cool. so that's 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 gonna be, I believe, a welcome change. Like as long yeah. as they don't have it be like um, they're not directing you to do that specifically, but they're just giving you the option where it's open. If you want, you can complete the game without killing anybody. Then yeah, then maybe it'll be like a trophy thing that you can get as well. So. Hundred yeah. percent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like. Uh, like the pacifist trophy or something. Yeah, we'll see. We'll have to wait and see. I'm looking forward to it. Yes. Um, so yeah, let's move on to the next topic: uh, Meta's or Facebook, if you're still inclined to call them to call them Facebook. Uh, but Meta uh, developed, built, created a human level AI that was done specifically to compete with humans in a game called Diplomacy, Diplomacy and yeah. they were very successful. 
Uh, I've never heard of this game until. Oh, I've now, never heard personally. of it as well. Yeah. But you 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 negotiate with the other players. I think it's a seven player uh, game. Yeah. Um, and you just have to like negotiate with them and then like win them over and that's about it. Which is why. Yeah. yeah. It's it's a game that's described like it's a as a combination of risk poker the game of poker and the tv show survivor so i think yeah. that will give you a, a visual idea of what that's it's about. that's quite a roundup of of, <laughs> of genres um yeah. but but to me like okay i'll get to this later but but yeah, yeah so so they, they went to the game they went to this game specifically for this game because it's not like chess or the go where if you know the strategy and you can plan ahead and observe what the other person did and like as long as you know the rules you can win right it, it right. just depends yeah. on how quick can you like you know figure out the best sort of like you know move to make and whatnot this relies completely on human interaction and that's what they were focusing on. They wanted to see kind of like the Turing test to determine if AI, like, you know, can fool a human into believing that the AI right. is a human, right? Like, yeah, so it's kind of yeah. like that, except I believe in, in uh, I'm not really sure, but I believe in this experiment, everybody knew that they were playing with an AI. Yeah. But the objective was just to win, right? And like I said, people will have to negotiate with each other. They have to like make deals or maybe like betray or whatever uh, to, to reach that objective. So um, this this AI was actually doing just that, and I read somewhere that a lot of players um, uh, preferred this AI to other humans. Really? Yeah, <laughs> and and the AI was able to like mimic how some people talk, or like you know, it wasn't like like the bot because it was all like text based. They didn't like like it was all like a text based uh, web based mm. game. So even like the 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 wording or like the, the the way that the sentences would be formed and whatnot sounds like a person, like a normal person. Uh although sometimes it would mess up. So it wasn't like perfect. So yeah. uh it would like make a deal with Italy to move something to um was it to Venice or Rome or something? And then it would later say, oh, no, don't do it. Or like, why did you do that? Or something like that. So mm. it's still, there's still a few kinks to work out. Uh, some of the responses don't really make sense. But overall, um, like, it wasn't one of the top players in the right. experiments that they did. So that's... that's pretty cool. Yeah, that, that's it's cool. That, like tech wise, yeah, yeah, yeah. It tech is wise, cool. exactly. Tech wise, it's cool. That's not really uh, what I specifically want to talk about. They they did say, uh, oh, we never mentioned the AI's name. It's Cicero. Cicero. C I C E R O. Yeah, I believe it's pronounced Cicero. So, uh, Cicero, I'll just read this quote really quick. Uh, While Cicero is only uh, is only capable of playing diplomacy, the technology behind this achievement is re is relevant to many real world applications, and that's what we want to talk about. Uh, controlling na natural language uh, generation via planning and I don't know what RL is, but something learning I don't know uh, could, for example, ease communication barriers between humans and AI powered agents. For instance, today's AI assistants excel at simple question answering tasks. I like telling you the weather, but if they could maintain a long-term conversation with the goal of teaching you a new skill, alternatively, imagine sense. a video game in which the non-player characters, NPCs, could plan and converse like people do. That is the cool part for me. Uh, understanding your motivations and adapting the conversation accordingly to help you on your quest of storming the castle. Mm -hmm. So, there are, like, I mean... I don't know if this is like a planned thing, but this is just a proposed application of Cicero or uh, Cicero-like sort of AI yeah. in video games where it really can give NPCs like life. Of course, NPCs, they like, you know, it's all like recorded, you know, there are voice actors that are coming to the studio that record the lines or whatnot. But imagine if they can adapt to what you're doing in the game. So they don't have to record for every single they situation. React, yeah. They, they, yeah, they, they react to you. They, they uh, help you out. They like inform you what to do next or where to go or like don't do that. They, all that sort of stuff, can just be code, yeah. rather than like you know pre-recorded messages. And so, sorry, one more thing as well is that it could also help with. Like if they, they could do it in a way where it's not saying the exact same thing every single time. So every time you approach danger, like it says, oh, don't go there, stop or whatever. But mm -hmm. if it actually like alternates between different phrases and different sentences, because if you see somebody that keeps doing the same thing, you don't say the exact same line as if it's like a completely recorded line. 
Mm. the language changes the the phrasing changes the wording changes like you know it also depends like how often are they doing this so you change what you say so with this ai it can actually make it more human in that regard as well where it doesn't seem like it's 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 scripted it's just natural language right i mean that like the only application i can think of or the is like in a sandbox style game where like you choose your own adventure and the game or the NPCs will react to yeah. what you have done. Like, and every character or every playthrough will be different uh, for each person. So it could work in that sense if, if they manage like to pull that, this yeah. off. Yeah, you know, that's, that's true. Uh, but it could work, I think, even like in a typical FPS game, right? Or like anything, like again, anything with NPCs. So it can be like an MMO as well. Yeah. Um, obviously, would, we'll would benefit have to be. on this, of course. Yeah. Yeah, I was even thinking um, VR games because, in what sense? Like, ha- like you know, NPCs or whatnot, or like maybe the the game AI or like whatever. Like, but the idea is that in VR, they're already visually immersed with mm. everything around you because of the VR headset. Um, maybe it will help a bit more if the people talking to you in the game, you know, especially if you're playing like an open world MMO type of thing and whatnot, are also like they, they sound more natural. They sound more human. They adapt okay. to what you do because with VR, I mean, I, okay, I don't know because I haven't really like played a lot of VR games, but I would imagine you have, or at least you will try to do more things in VR, like moving around and picking up objects and like maybe like you know um shooting weapons at whatever just to kind of see how the physics works and like that curiosity in vr i think at least at the beginning before maybe you get used to it i think that will drive you to do more like random things in the game and be kind of cool to have a person there reacting to that or aiding you through that or whatever i don't know like i was just thinking that it would help with immersion if you're if the people around you are you know the npcs you know the non-real person non-real people around you sound like real people i don't know yeah i uh, it would be cool in a gaming sense but it i just wonder in terms of coding or like oh, pro- yeah, programming yeah. something like this is it better to have this ai or is it better just to have multiple scripts well uh, so what you react you know uh, no, I, I know what you mean yeah, um scripting. Yeah, uh, so, so we obviously have to mention, you know, the negative sort of aspect of this. If this becomes the standard quo in the future, if, like if this AI or whatever iteration or version of this AI, well, not not takes over. I, I don't <laughs> I don't think it, it's going to take over like in like, you know, uh, Terminator or anything like that. But the uh, if it, it might take over the voice actors shops. Yes, actually, that is a fair that's, that's, point. That's the main concern that I have, is that this might be problematic for the voice acting community. Because I mean, you can very easily, very easily have this sort of AI mimic the style of somebody else. I'm sure that you can make this AI sound more human, but mm-hmm. the challenge is the things that it says. Right. Like the conversation yeah. sort of between it and other people, how to make that believable to be a human. But in terms of like how it sounds and the mannerisms and whatnot, I'm sure it's not that challenging. So again, going back to voice well, actors, to what does yeah. this mean? Like, is this like, I mean, we, we, we had the same conversation with AI art, right? We like have. it's, yeah, yeah. It's so now it's, it's gone beyond just like this is, a this visual is the real sort of thing. Yeah, 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 exactly. Now, but I still also can't help but see the good applications of this sort of thing, not just in gaming. So the one thing that I thought about, and not AI assistants. I mean, I don't want my AI assistant to sound human. I just wanted to like understand what I'm saying, and, and that's it. You don't um, want to have a conversation with your phone, really? I anyway. don't. But here's the thing. The first thing that I thought about with this, if they can really make it sound human, it might be useful for people that have some sort of depression. If they're like feeling lonely if they're feeling disconnected from the world of like so from a third movie uh, yeah yeah, so like from a like a therapy sort of type of thing something like that might be useful like people that lack companionship people that are depressed because they feel alone in the world or whatever i Mm -hmm. i can't really speak to what they're going through or what might be useful for them but i would imagine because you know how like some people say like you know just like talk to somebody right sometimes people don't have somebody to talk to yeah 
And if you can That's have true. this, I'm not saying it will be a therapist, but just like a chat bot, but that's just like legit a human or like a human like, maybe that will help maybe. ease some pain. I'm not saying it's going to be the cure, but it might like ease some people into it. That's the thought that I had because it, it might, it might. Uh, but like the qu the real question is, is it the same effect as talking to one of these chat bots as effective as talking to a person or like it, well i mean be, this this know. won't be a chatbot the idea behind this is that you know what i mean like, we know yeah, what it yeah. is in the back and yeah in yeah yeah, yeah but i think it might be even if you know that you're not talking to a real person but you're talking to somebody that is listening to you and responding to you right so yeah. just being maybe just being in a fake conversation might help people enough. just because it sounds like you're talking to somebody like a real person on the other side a, and maybe it, it would be something like, uh, sorry go yeah. on no no go on no, yeah, I was, yeah i was gonna say it sounds like a black mirror episode but yeah like it's, uh, it's one of those it really things. is like a black mirror episode i'm with you on all that on the positive but personally if it was any other company other than meta slash facebook slash zuckerberg I would be happy for this tech, but because it's there, I'm worried for it. I'm I don't think about this kind any of other company, I think whatever bad things Person. that Meta does with this AI, I think any other company would do as well. Like any other person, any other company or any other entity that, is, that would be in Meta's position right now would do the exact same thing. Zuck is not a unique kind of evil. Elon Musk is a not a unique kind of evil. Jeff Bezos was not a unique kind of evil. Whatever you want to say about these billionaires and visionaries and, you know, like whatever you want to call them, they're not unique in what they're doing. Anybody else would do the exact same thing and they would lie about it to people's faces. So it doesn't matter to me if it's meta or not. If any other company did something like this and they were on that level on like on meta's level whatever bad thing you think meta's gonna do that company will do as well the only like if it was like a if it was like a weird like or like a like an unknown vague maybe third party that doesn't have that much funding whatever they just like work on this idea maybe maybe we I'm can like be you. hopeful that Again. it won't be bad but, but somebody's gonna I buy them out Either way, yeah, but I just don't want to live in a dystopian future where Meta is controlling all the shots. That's it. Like, it needs to be, like, with AI, with their Metaverse crap, whatever they're doing, I just... Like, already people are, are not into the idea. I'm not the only one. Yeah, sure. yeah. Oh, no, yeah. But I, I think just, it's stupid. Yeah, but I'm just saying, like, what the, I just I would have preferred it coming from another company, even if it was from Elon Musk or or Amazon. That just personally, like I know okay, a different no, kind um, of evil, but it's just that. Yeah, I have no, I have biases against them. <laughs> no, I understand. I understand. I, I'm saying like for me, it doesn't really matter. Like uh, yeah, it's gonna happen. Like regardless of who's in charge, something bad is gonna happen. Or like these fears that we have, like are still viable the exact same way. Fair, um, yeah. yeah anyways this is like we're done with this topic let's Man, jump yeah, really let's quickly go. to the very end uh tell us about some of the winners that you're excited about from the 40th golden Dude, joystick award it's all it's near the end of the year it's all about game of the year okay and the golden joystick awards i think are one of the first few awards or the major awards that have come out and Joel, uh, this is the 40th golden joystick award this year so it's been 40 years it's crazy it's insane um, yeah yeah, yeah. So it's been hosted by Laura Bailey and Troy Baker. Uh, and everyone knows, already knows Troy Baker. Um, and if you don't know who Laura Bailey is, uh, she actually voiced Kid Trunks in Dragon Ball Z, which I found was a cool tidbit. And uh, more recently, Abby Anderson in Last of Us Part Two, which won her a BAFTA award, which is pretty mm. cool for Best Performer. Yeah. It's pretty cool. Um, that was back in 2020. But uh, anyway, the whole point is Game of the Year. So Elden Ring, as we know. Of course is massive this year and i don't yeah. think any other game has come close to it other than my i think the second contender is uh, god of war 2 mm, uh, which yeah, i haven't yeah. been i haven't played but i've been watching a streamer play it and it's mind-blowing it's so good um but, uh, but god of go war through. just came out so i don't think they had enough time you know to, it's, to... 
not for the golden joystick, but yeah, it's going to be golden joystick. for the game yeah. awards. Yes. Yeah, exactly. But for the golden joystick, there was no time for it to, or for the, for them to submit God of War into the, into, uh, the joystick awards. But yeah, other than yeah. that, it's Elden Ring, not a surprise. So the one ultimate game of the year. Yeah. Yeah. It won ultimate game of the year, but not only that, I want to wait one, two, three, four, five. It won five awards. Yeah. So it won ultimate game of the year. It won best visual design, best multiplayer game, which, I, I have a question mark on that, but okay. Yeah. Uh, Studio of the Year and the Critics' Choice Award, which is pretty much their internal uh, stuff. Which is their second ultimate game of the year sort of thing. Yeah, yeah. it's yeah, their, yeah. their internal game of the year. So it won that many awards already, and we haven't even reached the game awards. Yeah, uh, it's fantastic. Uh, close to it, I'm just going to mention Horizon Forbidden West did win Best Storytelling, which I found very interesting. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I, I've never heard much about the story, especially for the first one, but it's good to know that the second one has, I guess, deeper lore or deeper story. Um, but for me, the, the one game that did stand out out of this massive list is PC Game of the Year was Return to Monkey Island, which I found. Yeah, I know. Yeah, you're, yeah I, I know you're super excited about that game. Ron so. Gilbert should be happy. <laughs> yes, he's celebrating. <laughs> yeah, uh, but I don't know how I feel about that. Why? What do you mean? In what way? It's it's a good thing. Like, no, I mean, I mean, it's a good thing if another game also won. Like, it depends on what the game is, right? But I just can't help. I don't know. Who were the nominees for PC Game of the Year? I, I can look that up for you. Hang on. Yeah. Golden. While while you look that Give up, I'm just gonna continue. Uh, so PlayStation Game of the Year, not surprising, is Str- Stray because that yeah. was bonkers when it came out. Nobody <laughs> expected it to be that huge of a hit, and it was. Um, I saw a lot of people on Twitch play that game, and it's just a beautiful, beautiful game. Okay. Uh, Xbox Game of the Year is Grounded, and the most wanted game, something that we can both relate to. Is Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom again? Not a surprise. I think everybody, not a surprise. For not anyone a surprise. Out there. Yeah, um, this is like okay, even so less of a surprise as Elden Ring winning Ultimate should, Game of the Year. Yeah, true. Yeah, yeah it, but, it could be the next Game of the Year for next year. We'll, we'll have to wait and see. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, so, so yeah, uh, yeah. So the Golden Joystick Awards nominees were Neon White, which I've played. Fantastic game. I haven't mm-hmm. finished that game, but the story is nice. It's uh, like an anime style game. Yeah, I know uh, it. Yeah. Uh, Return to Monkey Island. That was the second. Hard Space Shipbreaker, which is like this chill uh, space game, uh, dad dad style job game. Mm. Tear Down was the next game, which is like I don't, I don't think I know that like, one. It's just no. like it's it's a physics based like destruction type game. Total War Warhammer Three Warhammer, so it's an RTS. Warhammer Forty Thousand Chaos Gate uh, was another one, uh, and that was the nominees. And the that's so it was uh, to me between Neon White and Return to Monkey Island. As PC Game of the Year. Have there been no, like, major PC game releases this year? Other than Neon White, personally, for me, I mean, Return to Monkey I, I, I mean, not, not in terms of nominees, but just PC game releases. I guess that's it. Um, because, <sighs> like, most of the other games are multi... I don't know, even, even Monkey Island is multi-plat, so I'm not sure. Neon yeah, White is it's, it's, yeah. it's it's weird. I'm just like I'm, I'm. I think it's a bit weird. This list of nominees for PC games, uh, PC game of the year. Um, yeah, I don't know. It well, won. Anyways. It it won twenty seven percent of the vote. Of this is all public votes, by the way. Yeah, I like, know. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. that's why they have the Critics Choice Award. So this yeah. is all public voting. Yeah. Um, no, I mean I'm not surprised that out of that list, this game won. I'm more surprised about the list of nominees to begin with. Yeah. That, like there must have been it. some like major new launch that happened this year. I don't know, but there's got to be something. Why did they not why did they pick these games specifically and not those other games? I don't know the reason. I, again, it could be from from users. Uh, I have to I have to see. I didn't dig the, it deep. So yeah, like how did they But I'm the, happy return like, yeah. to Monkey Island one. Oh, yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it deserves a win. Good on them. Like I said, out of that list to me, that's the obvious choice as well. Um, so yeah, uh, that, that's it. Any other game they want to highlight? Nothing. Um, for some reason, Genshin Impact keeps keeps popping up. Like, it's, well, yeah, it's it, it popped up award. as the best continuing or still playing game award. So yeah. that's yeah, yeah. Still Nothing new there. Yeah, it's it's still. Um, like, I mean, uh, Fortnite would be a contender. I don't know if it was one of the nominees or not, but that would be a contender as well. Uh, and, but I'm Genshin sure it Impact was there one, with yeah. A, yeah. next to Apex Legends, if I'm not a- mistaken. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So the the usual suspects. Yeah, yeah. yeah. 
So oh. no, it was good. It was, and the best trailer, game trailer, was Goat Simulator 3, just for fun. <laughs> Oh, that I was a fun that. trailer. I remember that breaking the internet as well. Yeah, so, it was a fun yeah. trailer. Yeah. The guy like, with the headphones and he's just like, yeah. <laughs> running around and the goat is like tearing down everybody. It was fun. And he's completely oblivious. Yeah, they, uh, they, they copied off, was it Dead Island or which game? Was like, it had they, uh, there was a game that had a similar sort similar. of thing. Similar, Dead Island, I think you might be right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, and the Steam Deck won Best Gaming Hardware. No surprise That's- there. That's not a shock. I still want one. I'm looking at Amazon, and like I can't order one in the UAE. I'm talking about. Yeah. I'm at. But uh, I'm still holding off. I'm I'm waiting for the next generation of of Steam Deck to get to buy in. That's me. Soon, I wait. soon, yeah, soon. I wait. Yeah. I, I I wait for the good stuff. <laughs> <laughs> and we shall wait no more to end this episode. Let's just end it right here. Uh, right, but really bye. quick, we won't be doing another episode next week. Uh, I'll be traveling. So probably midweek after that, we'll cover the Video Game Awards. And uh, yes, hopefully it's going to be all good stuff. Yeah, but until wait. then, yeah, yeah, yeah. So just uh, keep your fingers crossed. Vote for whoever you you know you want to uh, you want to win. Cast your vote soon. I don't know if they're still open. I think until now they're still open. I've, yeah, I've got I've done my Game Awards uh, votes. I've done the Steam Awards votes as well. There, that's a thing. Also cast your votes there. Don't forget. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So cast your votes everywhere. Until then. Thanks for watching the episode. Drop us a like or comment for more content like this or go to badgood.gg. We're also on Twitter and Instagram at badgoodpod. So give us a follow there and we'll catch you in the next one. Take care, guys.